Okay. <laughs> well, hello and welcome to PSG Knowledge here in Japan Q&A. And first of all, thank you for the patience <laughs> to try to get this presentation get working. Um, to start off, um, I would just like to talk about myself a little bit. Um, my name is Akane. I am with ACES Professional Editorial Support Team in my Vichka office. Um, I see there are faces that I see every day and there are faces that I don't. So thank you all for really coming here today. So that's that. Uh, so back to about myself. Um, as Ivanka's email said, I was born and raised in Kyoto and I spent my entire childhood there. Uh, but age of 20, I left um, to study in the United States uh, through an exchange program um, and spent there for two years. After graduating from that university there, I got to stay and work there additional two years. So that's a little bit of background about me. Uh, during the second year of my stay there, uh, I met who was then my partner and who is now my husband, Bernislav. Uh, with him, one discussion led to another, and then it was decided that I should move to Novi Sad, Serbia. <laughs> <laughs> so, very normal and unexpected, or I should say. Uh, that was April 2009, so almost 10 years ago. Believe it or not. <laughs> So that's a little bit about myself. So um, when Ivanka uh, initially asked me if I would be willing to do this PhD knowledge sharing about Japan, I was like, sure, I'm happy to do. I'm just not sure what people will be interested in and or will anybody be interested. Uh, the reason why I thought about this is because, um, like I said earlier, I moved here about 10 years ago. And in first few years, uh, I had lots of, lots of, lots of questions for everyone. For someone from the family, from friends, or someone that I run into on the street, which was all great. Um, but then, that was only the first few years, and I simply wasn't sure what people would be interested in to hearing about. So that's why uh, Ivanka sent out the uh, questionnaire in advance to see what you will be interested in hearing about, talking about today. So thank you for taking the time to uh, feel that in, in advance. So that's that. There we go. And I realized that I didn't put the slides out, so <laughs> that's where I moved over. <laughs> so that's that. And that's my name in Japanese. And I'm going to talk about the language a little bit later. Uh, so after receiving the uh, question through questionnaire, I prepared this small presentation as an introduction to the Q&A. So I'll first go over a few facts and um, topics, and then I'll open up the table to do the Q&A. So. Mm -hmm. But please feel free to jump in with any questions that you might have. I take all questions in both in Serbian and English, maybe in Japanese if you all will be comfortable with. So please feel free. So that's that. Japan. Is it a country unknown to you? My goal for this presentation is that I hope that you feel a lot closer, or at least a little closer to Japan. So that's that. Map, do you know? <laughs> uh, we are here in Serbia, and then that's where Japan is. And we're about 9,000 kilometers apart. Uh, it takes me about 24 hours from the moment I leave Novi Sad to reach my home in Kyoto. Does that sound far to you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see nothing and such, but do you, anybody have family, friends in New Zealand or Australia? There you are, so it's not that far. <laughs> so maybe Japan can be on your list to travel to sometime in the future. Uh, quick facts about Japan. Uh, geography. Uh, Japan is the country of an island, and to be precise, country of islands, because it consists over 6,800 islands. 
Um, but I think you're familiar with several of them. Uh, Honshu, which is main island, uh, Hokkaido, Shikoku, Kyushu, and Okinawa. As I heard that uh, you are taught during the elementary school here. Yes. So there you go, that's that. Uh, for population, we have 127 million people ranking 10th in the world. Uh, and approximately 40 million people live in Tokyo. Uh, as I heard last time, the population in Belgrade is 1.4 million people. So that's the comparison. <laughs> We're a small country with lots of people, so that's that. that. Uh, language, uh, we have three writing systems, Chinese characters, kanji, uh, hiragana, katakana. So those are three writing systems. Um, for Chinese characters, uh, in elementary school, primary education, children are taught up to 1,000 Chinese characters. During the secondary school and education, uh, children are taught up to 3,000 characters. I see the reaction. It seems, <laughs> it seems very difficult and challenging to learn and memorize all 3,000 words, but please, may I say that Japanese grammar is very simple subject, object, and verb. That's how it's done. There are no gender, nor cases, like it does in Serbian, so <laughs> grammar is very simple. So please, if you're interested in learning language, I highly recommend Japanese. Mm -hmm. uh, dialects, um, as you do have in Serbia, we also have dialects as well in Japan. Two major ones, uh, Western versus Eastern. Eastern one is what is often called a standard one, whereas Western one is from Osaka and Kyoto. So for instance, if I talk normally as a person from Kyoto, people can easily tell that I'm from Kyoto. If I talk to someone for, with an Eastern dialect, then I can tell that's that dialect. I think people also can do that here with a Bosnian accent or the Vojvodinian accent. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that. But we also have different dialects that's numbering up to 14 at the moment. So that's that. Okay, uh, economy and currency. I suppose economy is not a very interesting topic, but just as a quick fact, uh, GDP over $5 trillion supposed to rank third in the world from 2018. Uh, the currency we use is yen. Uh, one yen equals to 0 0.94 dinars. <coughs> so almost the same. So, uh, average monthly salary in Tokyo, the net salary is 325,000 yen, <laughs> uh, which equals to 306,000 dinars. But it's the highest, it's Tokyo, so <laughs> please keep that in mind. So, yeah. Yes, average. Yes. <laughs> now, uh, how can I explain about Japanese culture and how can I help you to understand its culture? And I thought about this over and over. It's difficult to do in such a short period of time, but I thought that I can introduce it to one of the key elements, which is harmony, uh, and it's called wa in Japanese. We Japanese people love harmony. We prefer harmony, we do not prefer chaos, uh, we prefer orders, we don't like messiness. <laughs> uh, we do try to act accordingly so that we can keep the harmony. This concept of harmony is what's reflected in our values that we have. Of course, with harmony, our society can function. Without it, it's very difficult. So I think this concept of harmony is what makes a difference between Japanese culture and the Serbian culture. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I am not saying that there is no order 
in Serbia. I'm certainly not saying that there is a, a culture of helping each other, uh, one and another. It's just that I think it's not in, done in the harmonious manner, let's say. So that's my personal observation. Now, we have two words in Japanese, honne and tatemai. Honne uh, translates to true personal feelings, whereas tatemai is uh, public feelings. Uh, in our Japanese society, tatemai takes priority over honne, which means that you put your own true feeling to the side for the sake of keeping the public uh, in harmonious manner. So, I think when it comes to understanding Japanese culture, uh, harmony plays a big role. Um, and I think having that in mind will help you understand why is it we do a certain manner that is so different than Serbian culture. So, that's that. Education, that was one of the number one uh, question from the questionnaire. So I prepared a few slides, so I thought it's easier to talk about it with slides, but I'll of course take question uh, during the Q&A. So how are schools different in Japan? Uh, educational system, we have primary, secondary, and higher education as they do, as you do here. Uh, for primary education, we have six years of elementary school, followed by three years of secondary school, which we call middle high school, uh, and then three years high school. So that's done. I think this is similar to Serbian education, I suppose. It starts from grade one and then it ends with grade nine in Serbia. Eight. And then, okay, so it's like four, four, four years. Okay. So that's that. Um, annual schedule for Japanese schools. I think the biggest difference is that our academic year starts in April instead of September. Mm -hmm. So that's that. <laughs> uh, normally, majority of the school have two semester program, uh, but there are others that have three semester programs. So our school year starts in April. Um, and then we have a summer holiday, which is the longest we have. And then we have a midterm before the New Year holiday in January. Uh, we celebrate New Year in January, uh, not like Chinese one. Um, and then we finish the whole academic year with the second semester in March. So that's that. Uh, here is a timetable chart. Uh, this brings me back the memory when I first moved to Serbia. Uh, I think it was during the work day and I was walking down the street in the center. It was like 11 a.m. And I was like, okay, I passed by school age kid. I was like, okay. I passed by cafes. Again, school age kids with parents. Okay, okay. I go to supermarket. I see more of them. I was like, aren't they in, why aren't they in school? I was like, okay. Afterwards, I only then learned that in Serbia, there are shifts. You have morning shifts and then an afternoon shifts. It was a strange concept to me because we have no shifts in Japan. So children go to school in the morning and then finish in the afternoon, even from grade one. So that's that. So we have a morning assembly and then have four lessons. Normally lasts about 50 minutes for high school. Uh, for grade one, it lasts as short as 35 minutes so that they have enough breaks in between classes. Uh, we have lunch, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later. Uh, we have two additional classes and then after school. Uh, for after school, we have sometimes proper lectures. Uh, we also have after school activities. So children can choose what they want to do after school. They can pick sports, basketball, volleyball, tennis, if the schoolyard has enough facility. Uh, or let's say calligraphy, uh, writing poems in Japanese, and so on. So my after school activities were uh, Japanese drums, wadaiko, uh, and volleyball. So that's what I did after school. 
uh, national holidays are observed in schools as well as uh, government facilities and the banks. And as you can see, we in Japan have more national holidays than those in Serbia. Because I think in Serbia we have 10 national holidays altogether. Something like that. Uh, we have actually 17 in Japan, so that's that. Um, I don't know what, if anything strikes you strange, um, but we have national holiday that relate to seasons, nature, rather than religion. Let's say we don't have any religious holiday per se. Uh, as a kid, I always look forward to three days holiday in May. Uh, that lasts from May 3rd to 5th. Uh, it's actually called um, Golden Week. It's a good time for anybody to travel there because there are many happenings um, for free, of course. So I highly recommend. And it's a beautiful time of the year. So that's the national holidays we have. Uh, school customs. Um, I think some of you have heard or seen how uh, school lunch works in Japan in videos and such. Uh, school lunch custom actually started right after World War II. Uh, it was because the food was so scarce after the war, uh, the government wanted to make sure that the school age children are well fed at least once a day. That was the uh, uh, goal of the school lunch that started uh, after 50s uh, and it still stands and lasts to this day. Uh, how does it work school? Um, I posted the video here but I'm deciding not to show because it lasts more than 20 minutes um, but I will welcome anybody who's interested to take a look. Uh, it's done by a YouTuber called Life Where I'm From named Greg who is Canadian, uh, married to Japanese woman, have two children uh, that go to elementary school in Japan, so I highly recommend it. But how does school lunch work? So in normal day, when the lunch time comes, a group of students from each class, about five to ten of them, will gather, dress up in apron, put the hat on, put the mask on for the hygiene reason. You go to uh, where the designated area to pick up the lunch, bring them back to each classroom, you lay it out so that the rest of the classmates can come over and then be served lunch. Those serving the lunch will be the last to be served, but everybody else wait for those to sit down and then eat together. Uh, teachers also eat the same lunch as well, so that's a culture. Um, and after the school lunch is over, again, all the dirty dishes are put together. Those in charge that week we'll put them back together and then bring them back to where the designated area is. I don't think in Serbia you have school lunch as it is in Japan. No, okay. So that's that. Um, I don't know, that's something different. Uh, also we clean up classrooms in yards after each day. Uh, which I also heard that it's not a custom here, if I was okay with it. <laughs> uh, so after the end of uh, last class each day, uh, students will bring all the tables and chairs back to the classroom. One group will start cleaning up the chalkboard. That's also messy because you have to puff up that, all the razor out of the chalk uh, dust. And there will be a group of students that will sweep the floor and there will be another uh, who will dip what we call zoki, uh, which is, uh, I would say, cloth made out of towel, uh, because we don't use mops in Japan. Uh, we'll dip that into the uh, water in the bucket, get rid of the excess water, and then on the floor with our hands down, up and down, up and down, up and down. That's how we clean this classroom. <laughs> so that's not. Okay, it's a good custom looking back now that you appreciate where you are and you try to keep it tidy because at the end you have to clean up. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's that. But I as a kid, 
never a big fan of it. So it's not. <laughs> also, I had uh, elementary school uh, bird yard or bird case, uh, which grade five and grade six supposed to clean up. So, which was also a duty as well. So. Uh -huh. Okay, I think it's not me talking like this one way about Japan, and I think I would like to invite everybody to start asking questions about Japan because I think that it's going to be more interesting <laughs> than me uh, talking about it. Uh, so I put together a slide that sort of captures what I saw in the questionnaire. So I will just have this on the slide as a reminder what we asked about. But if we don't mind, I'm just going to make the session into round so that it's easier to talk or we can talk like this, however prefer. Yes, maybe, no, okay. I'm a Japanese, so I'm just asking for what you prefer. <laughs> I know, am I in charge? As a Japanese person, I feel obliged to ask what the guests wish to have. So, <laughs> uh, Also, um, as Ivanka said, we have drinks and such. And may I stand up? Yes. Okay. Zeta, <laughs> would you do the honor? I have a Japanese sweet collage that I baked uh, that has flour, sugar, honey. Uh, and eggs, and then I have Kit Kats from Japan. One had a strawberry flavor, the other is milk, so please feel free to help yourself. Thank you. So, who's gonna go first with question? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? I take question both in Serbian and English and maybe Japanese, so. I can start off talking about uh, travel because somebody asked when would be the best season to visit Japan, what is it like to travel there and such, hidden gems, do's and don'ts. That's a big topic, but uh, as far as uh, weather goes, uh, it's extremely hot in summer. Temperature-wise, it's very similar to what it is here. It's just the humidity is so high that you feel it's five degrees higher than what it actually is. So I don't recommend summer. I definitely recommend spring or fall. Uh, that's now for travel tips. I don't know, where would you like to visit? Would you like to go to Tokyo? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, which is very different. I compare Tokyo being close to Belgrade, the chaoticness, uh, many happenings in comparison to, let's say, Novi Sad. I feel almost at home when I'm in Novi Sad. Even I come from Kyoto, the, um, the feel to it, the calmness that is really uh, resembling to what I'm used to back home in Kyoto. So it's like, yes! Okay, so uh, I suppose that Japanese people do like nature a lot, so mm -hmm. they travel during weekends, yes. camping, you know, going over Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, in Japan, uh, we don't normally take holidays or annual leaves. Uh, that lasts normally a few days. So we're keen to have activities available uh, to do just a day trip to one or two nights over somewhere else. Yeah. So hiking, definitely, uh, camping. Uh, it's now in trend to do uh, glamping. I don't know if you heard about it. Uh, glamorous camping. So it's not like a tent in the middle of nowhere, but rather you have a glamorous tents where you have a proper bed inside the tent mm -hmm. and you have a, a designated bathroom facility and so on. So that's becoming a trend in Japan as well. So you have that option to do as well. So definitely. Um, day trip, it's easy to do because you can take trains and go to another prefecture. For example, for me in Kyoto, um, we're facing the sea, so it takes me about two hours of train ride to get to the seaside. Mm -hmm. And then you can come back, so that's that. 
Yes. Did, did you get? I'm okay. Yeah, you're okay. Explain more days. No. How kids today, mm -hmm. I mean like eight or nine years old, mm -hmm. teenagers and older, mm -hmm. how do they feel in between mm -hmm. uh, Western, mm, mm -hmm. Western style of life mm -hmm. and your cultural style of life or old, uh, traditional? Traditional. Because I have a feeling mm -hmm. like it's um, there is something in between. It's changing. Yes, it's changing. I think in Japanese culture, even when I was uh, in teenage time, uh, Western culture is something that looked upon to Hollywood, glamorous, um, Western uh, having the lighter skin tone because in Japan the beauty comes with a lighter skin tone and such. So Western culture is something that was admired for. So I would say they're more keen to be fit to Western culture over traditional um, culture. Uh, Teenager would be more interested in listening to uh, Americans or British songs um, rather than the traditional Japanese songs, for example. Um, wearing jeans, okay, we don't wear kimono day to day basis anymore, but uh, <laughs> uh, yes, but I feel that uh, Western culture is, let's say, more appreciated among those teenage uh, children if I may say, um, over traditionals. Yeah. That's for sure. Is it a shame? I don't know. It's Japan is also changing itself. It used to be very traditional. Um, it's patriotic country. Mm -hmm. uh, it still stands. And you have a traditional side of uh, buildings, architecture, gardens, yet you have this 60, 70 floor high building that you will expect in New York um, and such. So those two cultures are, I wouldn't say coexist, but they're, they're both at the same time. So that's that. Anyway, anyone knows? So um, back to travel then, I suppose. Uh, do's and don'ts. Um, in Japan, we don't tip. So I think it's now becoming a culture in Serbia that if you get a good service, you're supposed to leave a little bit as a tip. Um, you may feel more... Um, not pressure, uh, obliged to tip in Japan because the service level is just different. Customer service is number one when it comes to Japan. As we will say in Japanese, uh, okyakusama wa kamisama, which means customers are gods. So we treat the customers with full respect, treating as them they are gods. So you may feel obliged to leave a tip. Please don't, <laughs> because they will be awfully confused and don't know what to do. So please don't. Uh, what else? Uh, I don't know. Anybody else? Do you shake hands? Yes, we do. We do, we do. Uh, we do bow. Uh, but of course we can shake hands. We don't hug. Not very common. <laughs> they do just that, you know. But yeah, we, should, we do shake hands. Um, but the way that we shake hands is different depending on who you're shaking hands with. Mm -hmm. If you're shaking hands with someone who's, let's say, older, um, at the higher position, uh, we we'll normally, you as a person, will shake hands with two hands mm -hmm. just to be so something like that. So yes? Yes. <laughs> Biggest challenge for you, mm -hmm. get used to here in Serbia, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, in some way you have uh, millions of people going on their jobs, mm -hmm. and everybody are so quiet. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> yes, it's different. <laughs> yes. It's quite different. Yes, I had when I went through the culture shock phase, of course. Uh, one of the first things that was challenging for me to overcome was like when I first started working PSG, uh, that was almost 10 years ago, and then 
I was often reminded that Hakane, take a break. Hakane, why don't you come to the balcony? Hakane, take a break. <laughs> but I was like, I, I, I just sat down. I feel I, I can't. <laughs> I, I can't move away from my desk at least another three hours. <laughs> Uh, so I think the, uh, how one approach work is different. So that's something that I have to learn to get used to, which is also different in the United States, which I also got used to. So that's okay. Uh, also, um, since we have this concept, honne and tatemae, I struggle personally uh, to better understand each other with my in-laws. Uh, especially my mother-in-law, who is from Bosnia and who can be more direct as <laughs> ever she can be. And I, uh, with uh, much love, I say that because uh, we went through a few years of difficult time trying to understand each other because I would think, okay, she says something. Does she mean something else? I have to read her. I have to better understand. So my Japanese way of thinking is kicking in at that point. I was like, oh, what? What did she mean by saying that? Did she mean this? Did she mean that? And no, but when she said that, she just said it because she, that idea popped through her head and then that was that. So, um, yes, yeah, so that's another thing. Um, a concrete example, let's say, for example, um, when I first came here and then I went to the store and then the store clerk told me that, don't you have something small bill to give me because I only have a thousand dinner? Uh, and I was taken back and I was like, what? Um, am, am I supposed to have a small? <laughs> and I was like, why don't you have change for me? <laughs> Which was so different because in Japan you're supposed to have everything ready. And that trades back to when I said that please don't tip in Japan because um, when I was working in a shopping mall and I was normally the last one to close the shop. So my duty was then to collect all the money from the cashier, bring it back to the accounting office where there was a machine to count the money uh, in. Uh, that matches with the machine that I was using as a cashier. So if the total amount of money that went through that cashier doesn't match with what you brought in on that day, even for one yen, one dinner is different, your name is going up on the wall of shame. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So that's why, okay, coming to Serbia, not having changed to return to me was very... No, <laughs> <laughs> I would say well, it was a huge surprise for me, yeah. So, and that's that. Now I'm trying to think of anything else. Like I said, it's been 10 years. Um, so I'm, those memories that I initially had, which was shocking to me, are fading slowly which I'm glad, um, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know, I do. Yeah. Uh, is that the harmony now in this balance because of the Western it is. influence mm -hmm. on the country? There is a great concept to keep the harmony, but there is also a high price when you try to keep the harmony at the cost of someone's individual wishes and wants, I think it, it causes imbalance. And of course, when it comes to the Western culture and then the Japanese traditional culture, I think it crashes. Um, and I think it will always have this challenge because we're island country. Uh, we have the island culture, uh, country mentality. Uh, we welcome guests, but we don't want you to stay. Please <laughs> don't. But that, of course, has to change with all the happenings in that we actually do need uh, workers from elsewhere to sustain what we need in the country. So we welcome now uh, people from the Philippines, um, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, and so on. So as uh, something that is somewhat similar to what it is in the United States. So, yeah. Um, it's going to be a topic for sure as a country to sustain what is traditional and balance it with um, Western culture. Could you tell us more about work in Japan, uh, differences between Japan and... Sure. Um, 
I, I had a part-time job. I had part-time jobs, uh, but I never had full-time job in Japan, so I had to use my friend uh, who works in the bank, as an example. So uh, she works in the bank for over seven years now. Um, her daily life starts like this. She wakes up 5 a.m. to prepare, prepare lunch for herself to bring us a lunch, uh, get ready and on. And she get on her uh, first train at 6 a.m., uh, and commute for about one hour, uh, so that will bring her to that location a little after seven. Uh, her office hour starts at eight, but she's expected to be there, but ready to receive customers at 8 a.m. So she will get to the office at least one, uh, one hour in advance to make sure that everything is ready for the customer, ready for her day to start, <coughs> and so on. Uh, she will finish her work around I think she said 5.30, 6 p.m. And again, same, one hour commute back home and start all over. Thankfully, she works in a bank, so uh, on weekends, the banks are closed uh, normally, so she doesn't have to. Uh, her husband also works in the same bank, but the different branch. Uh, he has a um, different position and higher. So his day starts at least one hour earlier and then ends an hour later. Mm. Uh, let's say as he climbs up to that um, hierarchy in the bank system, uh, you will expect that his working hours will improve. It's actually uh, mm. quite the opposite. If he becomes the head of the bank branch, he has to be the first to come to open the vault and he has to be the last one to close the vault. So he may come home around what, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., and then same thing all over. And uh, there is this culture to uh, host the client, which in Japanese called settai, uh, which involves uh, having to entertain uh, clients over golf game or such on Saturdays or even Sundays. So you technically don't have, let's say, days off. Mm -hmm. Do you have Japanese comments? Uh, we do, we do, we still do. Uh, very uh, right swing, I would say. And they, they do function actually. And they do organize a um, lot of um, strikes uh, in front of the government building. But the public has the law to have a strike. No, no, it's not. It's organized. Do you have a limitation for a working day like? I think the working condition has hmm, yes we do have working hours and by law they are supposed to work certain amount of hours if you over if you exceed that then it's going to be a problem so smart Japanese people came up with this uh, concept of, of service over time which means that you're going to do a service to the companies so that you you're not going to, exactly, you volunteer to do it the overtime, so you're not going to charge the company to pay for it. So actually, the long hours can be as long as 10 to 12. What about uh, people who have kids? How do they manage? I guess your friend does not have children. Yet. Yes, <laughs> but there are other families with such conditions. So mm -hmm. uh, the for office workers, let's say, um, that's somewhat typical type of work life they have. Mm -hmm. So I think children normally don't get to see father too often. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, my father had a different type of work. He first worked as a piano tuner, and then he started to work as a security. Uh, so he had a different shifts, sometimes morning shift, afternoon shift, 24-hour shift. But there will be time that I will see him. So. He being around was always something that's normal to me, but there are friends of mine whose father were rarely around, so I think it's normally the mothers who will take care of everything at home and such. And they stay at home, they don't work, they don't have a career. Well, some do, and there are more and more mothers who are working, mm -hmm. um, because as you saw, it's it's expensive to live in Japan uh, with one income, so 
you ought to work, I think, both. Um, but then we have an issue of shortage with uh, kindergarten, for example, mm -hmm. um, as you do here in Serbia as well. But it's a different level. So. Is there a kind of support, sorry? Mm -hmm. No, Is it's fine. Is there a kind of support for working mothers from the government? The government says there is, <laughs> but it is the government. Uh, I don't think it's working out quite well because I do have friends who have toddlers um, and they have trouble getting their children into uh, kindergarten. So one gave up on starting to work or going back to work. Few others find a way, so which means that you have to pay for um, uh, kindergarten or daycare services 100% on your own, whereas you could be uh, paying for 10% to 50% of it if you can get your children into uh, registered uh, daycare services. So I hear that they say it's very difficult. How they manage? Got some my money somehow. <laughs> You said something about annual leave. Mm -hmm. There's no annual leave. There is, but you feel utterly feeling bad about taking annual leave because when you leave, that means that you leave your work to your colleagues who you work with closely. One good example is my parents. Uh, they were both working at the same time when I got married. Um, they have to ask uh, six months in advance with their bosses that they unfortunately have to take 10 days off because they have to go to Serbia to attend the wedding. And then with May, we... <laughs> I, I'm laughing because it seems awfully strange, but it really was like that. And they have to get okay, and they have to talk to colleagues and then apologize. A million times, I'm sorry, but I have to go and then such. Um, and if they did take time to come over here. Um, but, yeah... <laughs> Uh, they do, but you do take annual leave in the period of, let's say, two, three, three four days at most. That's commonly take, yeah. Do you have mm -hmm. any time for social life? Social life, yes, after work. Why not? <laughs> 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 it doesn't look like what we do. Yes, yes we do. Um, the friend that I mentioned who works in the bank, she is... Uh, uh, into doing yoga, so after work she'll come back at uh, 7 p.m. She'll go straight to the yoga classes, do her yoga, come back and work. Uh -huh. And what about mm -hmm. uh, uh, night life? Do you, do you have an active night, night life like we do have? Yes, surely we do. We have bars that's open till 5 a.m., so that's not a problem. <laughs> uh, good old times. Uh, <laughs> Uh, there are many restaurants that do work long hours, um, so until, I don't know what it is now here in Serbia, but we do have restaurants, bars, uh, nightclubs that are open till 7 a.m. So it's mm -hmm. not, no problem. Um, train works almost throughout the night, so you don't have to worry about how to get home. You have taxi, you have other means of uh, transportation, so yes. And you may see some photo with a drunk uh, people lying on the station, and yes, that can happen. <laughs> <laughs> very much so, and very common. That's when you get, sorry, I, I'm going to get back, but that's when you loosen up, you um, choose, uh, when you loosen up, not having to worry about what the public image you may have. <laughs> you get drunk, chew yourself, come out. <laughs> and it's okay. It's uh, during the weekdays or just on Fridays? Depends. Uh, during the work day, uh, you may get asked by, let's say, Vlada, your boss. Say, eh, let's go have a drink. In Japan, you're obliged to go. <laughs> and you have to stay with him until he's done with your drinking. <laughs> so, have to. So... <laughs> when there was news like a few days ago uh -huh. that some of the uh, like, politicians mm -hmm. was late for three, three minutes on a session. Yes, the ministry uh, who is in charge of yeah, uh, Olympic Games, yes. Uh, 
he was uh, he quit or something. Uh, like he turned in the resignation. Yeah, why? Because okay. he was three minutes late. Shame again. <laughs> uh, why is the shame so big in, in Japan? In, 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 uh, in connection to the mm -hmm. harmony and, mm -hmm. um, in a in a uh, presence, in a, mm -hmm. in a feeling, in a mm -hmm. person, and how Why? How? It's in order for you to, I think, function in a society where being together, being part of the society is highly valued, when you become naughty and make a mistake, you ought to take that ownership and then take a responsibility. And that's what happened with this politician. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> It's just three minutes. It's like, three is, minutes. Is it the same it, with, the, with the trains? It is the same with the trains. And I remember uh, first time uh, my husband, uh, Zema, was in Japan. And we were taking a train from the airport to my home in Kyoto. And there goes the announcement in Japanese. And then I go, oh, after this long trip. And he goes, why? What's wrong? And I said, oh, they said that the train's going to be late. He was like, well, now, half an hour, one hour, how long do we have to be stuck in the train? And he was all ramping about it. And it's like, what, what are we going to do? I mean, should we get off the train? And I was like, why do you want to get off the train? And I go to him, I was like, well, why are you so upset? I just don't understand. And then the train starts moving. That was in a matter of two minutes. <laughs> and he's like, why is the train moving? I said, like, yes, it's. It's, it's moving because it's moving. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't understand. And he was so like, but they said that it's going to be late. But yes, it was two minutes late. And there goes the announcement in the background. I sincerely apologize for the delay that's been caused. We should certainly understand the value of the time. And then we will try to uh, shorten the uh, tra train by two minutes so that you get to the final destination on time. Da -da 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 <laughs> yes, yes. So, would you say that living in Japan is stressful? <laughs> uh, now, I would say yes. It is stressful for me. I have actually reverse culture shock now when I go back to Japan. As much as it's my home country, I feel that I got used to living here and away from Japan over 16 years. The things that I have to remember. For example, I as a Japanese are expected to act a certain way as a Japanese female, I have supposed to act certain manners. I have to constantly remind myself, I have to do that, I have to do that. So yes, it's stressful, I would say. It's convenient, but it's at the price of the little stressfulness. Yeah? Yes? Is there a big gap between generations? Or you mm -hmm. can see often uh, from parents and mm -hmm. children taking dinner, or grandparents, or Maybe it's changed now, suppose. Even when I was a small child, I think it was changing already then. Uh, I actually grew up in the household of four generations. Great-grandmother, uh, great-grandmother, uh, great uh, grandparents, my parents, and myself. So that was four generations. And that was common in my neighborhood, which was a small village. Uh, so my friends also had the same setup. Uh, so, for us, it was common to eat together, <laughs> wait for grandfather or father to come home, sit down and eat together. Until then, you don't. So, but I think it's now changing now because I think a uh, household of the multiple generation is really uncommon, I would say. Uh, and even in a nuclear family, as we call family of parents and the children, uh, parents are busy with work, so it's often that school children will come home where nobody's around, and then they may have to eat their dinner on their dinner on their own, and then that's just that. So, yes. What do the children usually do during the summer vacation in the parents' mm -hmm. uh, are at work? You can. We have camps. Uh, we also have 
grandparents, <laughs> uh, as you do here. Uh, we also have uh, organized activities in the community. So we have community center throughout the uh, country uh, where they do organize uh, sports activity, cultural activities where children can go on their own to attend. So that's that. Mm -hmm. uh, in comparison to the one in Serbia, yes. <laughs> uh, we have public and private health care. Uh, um, public uh, private uh, clinics do not make a difference in terms of uh, how they operate as they do in Serbia. So we have either the uh, health insurance through the government or uh, the employee, uh, employer, so through your company. Uh, normally you pay 10% of the total price if you have either one of the case. Uh, for elderly above 75 years old, uh, healthcare is free. Uh, for children, almost the same applies. So that's that. So when you go to the health uh, hospital, you have a shelter. Uh, yes, uh, where you be told to go where you need to go, and um, not just that. Normally, it is, I would say, well organized in a sense that like you need to have a referral to go other experts or um, uh, specialized doctors. It can be done within a day. That's, I hope that answers. Hmm? What do you miss the most in Japan? Food. Food. We do, but it's very expensive. The s <laughs> this sign, small cheese, costs about thousand dinars. So yes, it's very expensive. But we do have cheese. We have imported cheese um, as well. Um, what is like the regular food that on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. right? Do we eat fish every day? No, we don't. We eat meat as well. Yeah. It's just not as 300 gram per person kind of way. Uh, no. <laughs> we eat bread as well. You, people might find funny, but we do. Uh, the normal meal consists of rice, soup, two sides, and then a main dish. That's how our meal consists. Of course, that can be Western type of food where we have a spaghetti or pasta, bread, or bread. May I suggest if you ever have a chance to go to Japan, please try bakery. It's lovely. It's French style. I think you will appreciate that, Tiana. It's very tasty. <laughs> so yes, I do miss food. Um, I guess fish the most because we're island surrounded by sea, so the seafood is all as fresh as it can get, so and it's readily uh, accessible in a supermarket. So, is it expensive? Um, I would say yes. I would say, for example, the slice of um, white fish fillet may cost about two hundred yen. Uh, meat, uh, it costs about ten times more expensive than what it is here. Uh, three carrots, although Japanese carrots is really thick and big, uh, it costs about 199 yen, which is about 200 dinars for three carrots. Uh, fruit, uh, apples cost about 200 per piece. Per piece, yes. <laughs> yes, it's very generous what it's you know, available here in Serbia per kilo. Not even to have it. <laughs> yes, it's uh, awesome. No, no. Um, when you, when uh, one man meets another man, mm -hmm. the coincidence mm -hmm. in the street, uh, and if the occasion is uh, that they can start to talk mm -hmm. for some reason, mm -hmm. do they do easily or uh, is it very like they're on distance and they. Uh, now I wouldn't say this, but I go, aha, konnichiwa, I will always greet, and I said, uh, quickly ask how you're doing, na 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 na, but 
while you're having the conversation, your brain is kicking in, thinking that, okay, is this person in a rush? Is that person going somewhere to do? Okay, maybe better not to carry this conversation, not to be rude to take this person's time. And you're doing that vice versa. So we just politely chat, chit chat, and then depart. So there's no culture of, for example, meeting up somebody in the street here and then say, hey, haven't seen you forever. How's it going? Let's go for have a coffee, a drink. That really happens in Japan, which I adore now here in Serbia. So, yes. Yes. Would you tell us and me again mm-hmm. the story about your name? I love it. Yeah. Ah, my name. Yes. Uh, um, my name had two Chinese characters. Uh, first means crimson, which is a shade of red. And then the second one uh, means melody. Uh, my name itself, Akane, doesn't mean anything, as many people might be surprised. Uh, but the Chinese characters actually carry meanings to it. So how did my parents came to this, uh, these two characters? Actually, it was my father who picked those characters. Um, he was then, like I said earlier, uh, was a piano tuner. And he met my mother, who was working as a receptionist at a music school. Uh, he was always into music, because my late grandfather was also a piano tuner. Um, and he, was, he learned that my mother is pregnant with me, and they decided to think about names. And then one day, uh, he was going home. It was lovely sunset with the color of crimson. So that's him. He realized, OK, I'm going to name my daughter with these two characters, and that's how my name came. Yeah. <laughs> Mia's, uh, we came, Zeman and I came up with the name Mia, and then I asked my parents to pick two Chinese characters, or whatever, uh, Chinese characters for the name. So they put their heads together uh, for days and days and days and weeks and weeks and weeks. <laughs> and they, they came up with these two characters. First means pearl, second one is love. So they gave her those two characters to say that she's going to be loved and going to be beautiful as pearl. So that's that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in tears. <laughs> so yeah. Mia learning the Japanese? Yes, she, I would like to say yes, she is. Uh, I do talk to her in Japanese when I talk, uh, address to her. Uh, she is starting to recognize words. So when I tell her in Japanese, oide, which means doji, then she will come towards me. Does she really understanding that language itself? Or she just heard that when I tell her doji, she is expecting me to come over, so she just act that way. I don't know, but uh, yes, um, she's learning. And uh, she's also uh, learning to sing in Japanese because he, she hears it and then she just picks up the words like that. So I don't know how fluent she can be by just me talking to her, but... And <laughs> <laughs> he actually learned, he took Japanese classes when he was in the United States. Uh, he learned, he's almost fluent when it comes to food-related words. Uh, <laughs> uh, he can follow some of the conversation, picking up the words that's being spoken, uh, but he can, he's not the level to carry conversation just yet. He can ask what you need, what does it mean, uh, how much is it, uh, and so on. So he can get by as a tourist, but someone to live there, Do you normally learn English as the first foreign language? Yes, yes, we do. Um, it used to be from uh, s- uh, s- middle school. Uh, so I started learning English from the middle school, but now in it is introduced from the elementary school from grade one. So from six mm-hmm. years. And only English is offered um, mm-hmm. as a part of the mandatory education. Mm-hmm. What about Chinese? Uh, you can choose to learn in high school, mm-hmm. but it's elective, so it's not a mandatory. Mm-hmm. So. And then which language is Spanish, French, or uh, German? German. <laughs> uh, I think it, you, they are commonly offered uh, in university and uh, college. 
mm -hmm. uh, but not in the secondary education or primary education unless they're private and they're funded or related to schools, let's say in Germany and such. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I went to all girls Catholic middle school and high school. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we were offered to learn um, Latin, mm -hmm. which I did not, so. <laughs> <laughs> respectively. <laughs> so yeah. Are Japanese people uh, religious? And first of all, what is the major religion mm -hmm. in Japan? Uh, we have two major religions, um, Buddhism and Shintoism, and they coexist for e uh, centuries now. Buddhism has uh, Buddha as one god, singular god, whereas Shintoism, we have multiple gods. We see God in water, we see God in a uh, tree, we see God in fire. Uh, so the concept is really different from one to another, yet they have lived together uh, in the Japanese people's day-to-day um, -day life. For example, at my house, we have a um, shrine, Buddhist shrine, that's dedicated to our ancestors. Mm -hmm. Also, we have a Shinto shrine, dedicated to uh, prevent family from natural disasters, fire, water, and so on. So you can do both? Yes. Yes, my grandparents will wake up in the morning, do the prayers to the um, Shinto shrine to keep the family well, and then go to the Buddhist shrine and say that uh, whole board is well with you, ancestors, up to there. <laughs> and do the whole tradition of um, burning the scent and then uh, praying. So there's no the division between the Buddhist No, not necessarily. Uh, we also have other cult uh, religions as well, Christianity, um, Muslim, and all that. Orthodox, maybe. We do. Yeah. And I was talking to Preda earlier. Uh, we have one Russian Orthodox church in Kyoto. Mm -hmm. uh, very lovely location, calm. Uh, uh, yet, um, it's to me strange. I walk there, uh, I had to see it. <laughs> uh, it's light blue colored church surrounded by palm trees. I don't know why, but it's, like, it's just like that. So yes. so yes, we do have Orthodox as well. We also have a Greek Orthodox as well. So yes, we do. Yes. Uh, yes. I see everybody starting to get tired. <laughs> so, um, Unless there are more questions, Ivanka? Yeah. Yeah? Sorry. Yes. Uh, about the tea. Yes. Is it still the big thing over there? Yes, as it, as it is in here, Turkish coffee. So I have here, I unfortunately didn't get the Japanese team in time. Uh, many thanks to Serbian Post. Uh, <laughs> so I don't have anything to serve today, which I had. Uh, but normally we'll prepare the pot of tea depending on how many you have, you have let's say two glasses, you wait, you carry conversation as you wait for the tea to be ready, pour for one to the other, and then carry on conversation. That's normally my, uh, how my day ends in Japan with my Is grandmother. It, uh, like really ceremonial? Or it's stuff? not, hmm, we have a traditional tea ceremony and um, versus da daily uh, ah tea serving. So daily tea serving is as I just described now, whereas we also have a traditional tea ceremony where you wear kimono, uh, you have a, a proper setting of the hot water um, and the tea equipment, uh, precisions you have to follow. On uh, uh, well, what occasions? Why? Oh. Uh, some just practice uh, as a part of hobby and then um, to carry on that tradition. Uh, or sometimes it can be um, occasion, let's say, for example, when you turn 20, it's called uh, coming of age, um, and you are introduced into adulthood. So part of the uh, community uh, may introduce a uh, young adult uh, to remember a tradition, so they're encouraged, meaning obliged, to attend a tea ceremony, so that's that. 
the twenty is like a uh, mm -hmm. border between young and adult. <sighs> young and adult. Like eighteen mm -hmm. here or something. In Japan, it's twenty. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is your, um, oh, sorry, mm -hmm. who is your favorite writer, Japanese? What do you like to read? Who are you? I'm an alien, yes. I mean, I have to say Haruki Murakami. I mean, you have that available in English. Uh, Yamamoto Banana. Um, I think those are commonly available in English, so you can get to the access to it. So yes, they are. <laughs> Great. Yes. Will you be there during the Olympics? I have to ask. Ah, yeah. There was a question about that. I don't know at this point. We plan to go this year because uh, this year, a year before Olympics, there will be a World Cup uh, rugby. And it's going to be held in Japan. So we wanted to go watch rugby game, but we're not sure how feasible that is uh, having Mia around. Uh, so we're not sure if we don't go this year, perhaps next year, maybe during the Olympics, but not sure. I, I, I personally don't like crowds, so I might just run away from that Olympic <laughs> side and all that. Although it's a shame if there are games that we could attend and then you know, support Serbian team, we'll be more than happy to. <laughs> Speaking of which, there are two official cities in Japan to welcome a uh, Serbian team. Uh, one is in uh, Yamaguchi, in the, um, near Kyushu Island. Uh, they are to welcome a Japanese, uh, no, sorry, a Serbian woman volleyball team. Mm -hmm. They are super excited, getting the whole community ready. They are offering the Serbian language classes. <laughs> they have Ivar, Lakia, all those. <laughs> Uh, no, being sold at the community center and all that. Uh, you actually can get to see that uh, on the YouTube. Um, it, the channel is called Serbia Channel. Uh, in Japanese, it's called Serbia Channel. That's um, run by two Japanese uh, that live in Belgrade, Mr. Uh, Otsuka and uh, Mr. Hirata. Um, first one has lived here a few decades from Yugoslavia time. Uh, the other is a Japanese uh, instructor at the University of Belgrade. Uh, and they started to, to, uh, this YouTube channels to reach out to the Japanese tourists who will be interested in coming to Serbia. Uh, you might be surprised, there are interests for Japanese tourists to come to Serbia. So that's how they started the channel, but now they're offering this as a way for corporations to come over to Serbia and for them to get to know Serbia better. But anyway, uh, one of their channel, uh, one of their videos uh, is talking about the city that's supposed to welcome the Serbian team and they're very excited. Is there, so, you know, is there a Japanese uh, community here in Serbia? Uh, there is. Um, that's the biggest one is of course in Belgrade that evolves around the embassy staff. Uh, there are about, I think, 150 Japanese people in Serbia now. Are you connected to them? Unfortunately, not too, too much. One, I live in Novi Sad, uh, hard to get to the events. Uh, and also, I first wanted to immerse myself into the Serbian culture, so I wanted to get that um, mindset into it, so I sort of, uh, not on purpose, uh, run away from them, <laughs> <laughs> to be reminded of the Japanese culture and then the <laughs> customs that I need to follow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yes, uh, and there, I think there are about, I want to say, five Japanese people that live in Novi Sad. Uh, one is a Japanese professor who has lived here for ages. She is ethnically Japanese, but she doesn't have a nationality here anymore because she renounced it to have a Serbian nationality. For those who don't know, uh, Japan doesn't allow t uh, dual citizenship. So mm -hmm. if you want to take Serbian or another, you have to renounce. They are uh, Japanese ones, so that's that. And then there are two um, ballet dancers, I think. They might be still part of the, the positive. Um, and I think there will be two more. So, yeah, there is a community. <laughs> <laughs> so.
before. What kind of jokes uh, you make uh, usually the family? What categories? Maybe have here Lala and Sosa, policeman or Bondi. What kind of jokes you make? It's as much as it's difficult for me to understand the Serbian jokes. It's difficult for me to <laughs> describe the Japanese jokes, and uh, I'm proud to say that I'm from western part of Japan, which is called Kansai. Uh, Kansai is uh, known for comedians, and we're supposed to be funnier than those fancy um, eastern <laughs> uh, Tokyo people. <laughs> so we often make jokes uh, against each other, saying like, "You all, you two are fancy, whereas we're too not so polite." <laughs> Uh, so, and that, I don't know, I, I, it's hard for me to make a joke in Japanese because by the time I explain what that means to you, <laughs> it's going to lose the, <laughs> the point and then the fun, funny part. So, yes, but we do joke. We are not all serious, but we do joke a lot. <laughs> yes, yes. You talked about values. Mm -hmm. how, how do you teach children that values, uh, especially now when mm -hmm. parents are so busy? Mm -hmm. Do they teach, uh, t do, do schools teach them or? Uh, in primary education and elementary school, we have this subject called virtue. Uh, so during the class of virtue, you teach children what is virtuous to do or not to do. Uh, you teach, teach, I mean, it's still parents' responsibility to teach children what values mean and such, but in school as well, through this virtual class, they teach um, concepts of values, let's say. What it's good to do, what it's bad to do, why so, in the context of being the citizen as a part of society and community and so on. So yes, they do teach. I don't know if it's such subject actually. No. Okay. So yes. Well, thank you for listening to me blubbing about Japan and I hope that you got to learn a little bit more about Japan, but uh, of course, after this presentation, uh, if you have anything that you might be wondering about Japan or you might be planning to go to Japan, please do reach out. I'm always around. So. Thank you. Fala.